Hello, welcome to uh, Unit 5. This is a Math 8 video, um, and we're going to be talking about linear systems of equations. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to talk about Section 1, which is we're going to be exploring systems of linear equations. So our lesson objectives is that we are going to determine if a given coordinate point is a solution to the system of linear equations and identify the unique solution of a system of two linear equations from a graph. So let's talk about what a system of linear equations is. And let's write this down. Um, what I know that a system of linear equations is two equations okay uh, and, we, and we, sometimes you can have more than two equations but for our purposes we're just gonna be talking about two equations um, and th and that's what a system is you have two equations okay and you're looking for so you have two equations uh, and you're looking for a solution that works for both equations okay now let's do something here real quick um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to look at these two uh, linear equations here um, I have the equation x plus 3y equals 5 and I've got the equation y equals negative x plus 3 now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug those into Desmos um, and graph these to show you something okay okay so once I have graphed both of these equations here and I just type them simply into Desmos and what you can see is that the red line is x plus 3y equals 5 is here okay and then the blue line y equals negative x plus 3 is here now what I'm looking for is a solution that works for both equations now what I realize is that I have points all along this blue line that will work for the blue graph, okay, that are solutions. So any point that you have on this blue graph, okay, is a solution to this top equation, okay. Similarly, any red point, any point on the red line, okay, would work for um, the red equation. Okay, those would be solutions. But what I'm looking for is a solution that works for both. Okay, and what that means is that I want to find the point of intersection. Okay, so here, let's take a look here. In this point right here, it, and I'm going to show you something. This point right here is what I call my happy place. Okay, this is my solution to the system. Okay, so the point of intersection here, all right, so the point of intersection, okay, is my solution to both equations, or is my solution to the system, okay? And that's what I'm concerned about, okay? So uh, what we're doing here is we're just looking at both of these equations, okay? And we want to find a solution that works for both, okay? So the point of intersection here is my solution. And how I would write that is this point here, um, and that would be the, the coordinate point uh, 2, comma 1, okay, is my point of intersection. So my solution that I would write down here is the point 2 comma 1 okay and that's what we're looking for all right now what I want to do um, so so that's what we're doing okay so that's the first objective we wanted to determine if a given coordinate point is a solution to a system of linear equations okay now what I've done is I've graphed this to show you how we get that okay but what I want to do is 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 take a look and see how do we determine that okay so the point 1 negative 2 is a solution to the system okay and what we want to do is verify that solution okay and so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna label this as my first equation 
okay, in my second equation. So in my first equation, okay, I've got 3x plus y equals negative 1. Okay, now in my solution set here, okay, when I have the point negative 1 comma 2, what I have is I have an x value, which is equal to negative 1, and I have a y value that's equal to 2. And if I'm going to verify, I'm going to substitute those in. I'm going to replace x and y with those numbers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, I'm going to write 3 times negative 1 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay, now what I want to do is do the math and verify that we have the right answer. Okay, so I'm going to do 3 times negative 1, okay, which gives me negative 3 plus 2 equals negative 1. Is this a true statement? So I'm going to do negative 3 plus 2, which gives me negative 1, and that's equal to negative 1. So this is a true statement, okay? So this point checks out for that equation. Now what I want to do is also do that to my second equation. Okay, so in my second equation, I've got y equals negative x plus 1. Okay, and I'm going to verify that negative 1, 2 is my solution. So x equals negative 1, y equals 2. Okay, so I'm going to plug those numbers in. So I've got 2 is equal to. Now notice here I've got a negative x. I'm going to let x equal negative 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put negative, negative 1, and then plus 1. Okay, and what happens here, you know, to do the math, 2 is equal to uh, the opposite of negative 1, okay, or subtracting a negative 1 really is going to make that a positive 1. So I've got 1 plus 1, and then 2 is equal to 2. That's a true statement, okay, so that works out. So here's what we can, here's what we've got, okay, um, and here's the conclusion that we need to draw, okay, and what that is, is that since... The point negative 1 comma 2 is a solution to both equations, okay, it is a solution to the system, okay, and a system is just more than one equation, okay, and here's what we, here's the other thing that we can conclude, negative 1, 2 is the point of intersection, okay, on the graphs, okay, intersection on the graph, or graphs, okay, and let's do that, let's just quickly, uh, I'm going to plug these two equations into Desmos and see what we get. Okay, and once I graph this, what I notice is that when I graph both of these equations, the point of intersection is the point negative 1, 2. Okay, so that's another way. So we can do it, you know, algebraically. We can verify that this is our solution. Okay, but we can also check the graph. Okay, so let's take a look at solutions versus non-solutions. So let's take a look here. Um, we have the system of equations, uh, 2x minus y equals negative 1 and then 4x minus y equals positive 1. So we know that this is a solution, 1 comma 3. Okay, and what I'm going to do is plug these values into each equation to see what we get, and then I'm going to show you how it wouldn't work over here. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, so this solution, um, here's what I know, is that x is equal to positive 1, and that y is equal to positive 3. So I'm going to plug those in. I'm going to do 2 times 1 minus 3 equals negative 1. So 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 equals negative 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1, equals negative 1. This is a true statement, so we're good on this equation. Okay, let's plug that into the second one. So I've got 4 times 1 minus 3, does that equal 1? 4 times 1 is 4, minus 3 equals 1. 4 minus 3, that's going to give me a positive 1, equals 1. That is a true statement. So since it works for both, so true... For both, okay, that means that it is a solution to the system, okay? All right, let's take a look at the second one. So not a solution. Let's plug that guy in. X equals negative 2, all right, let me, and then Y equals negative 3. So let's plug that in, okay? So 2 times negative 2, so 2 times negative 2, minus y, which is minus a negative 3, does that equal negative 1? Okay, so 2 times negative 2 gives us negative 4, uh, and then plus 3, 
okay? Subtracting a negative means it's going to be plus, and then does that equal negative 1? So if I take negative 4 and add 3 to it, I do get that negative 1 is equal to negative 1. That is true. So it works for that equation. Now let's check the bottom one. If I do 4 times negative 2 and then minus a negative 3, does that give us 1? Okay, so 4 times negative 2 gives us negative 8, and then plus 3 equals 1. So I've got negative 8 plus 3, that's going to give me a value of negative 5. And does negative 5 equal 1? That is false. So since this is false, so since this is false, okay, the point negative 2, negative 3 is not a solution to the system. Okay, is not a solution to the system. Okay, and that's it. All right, that's all we're doing. All right, so um, let's take a look at the next page. Okay, so again, you know, we can look at this graphically, um, and sometimes you're given the system, but you're also given the graph of that system, and we're looking for where do the lines intersect, okay? And so that is my, what we call the happy place, okay? And over here, that would be the point negative 1, 2, okay? And so I believe we have already looked at this graph, okay? But that's where the lines intersect. So negative 1, 2, um, and this is the solution <coughs> to the system. All right, and that's all we're doing. All right, let's take a look at a real-world problem here, okay? Um, and let's go ahead and read this, okay? It says, Helene is organizing a party, and she is shopping for 10 pieces of fruit to offer her guests. She wants a mix of apples and oranges, okay? She has $8 to spend. Apples are a dollar each, and oranges are a dollar fifty each. If she spends an entire $8, how many pieces of each fruit can Helene buy? So here is a system of equations that models this, and we'll go over how we obtain this. But what we do is we want to figure out what does x represent, okay? And let's do arrows, okay? x represents this, y represents what, okay? So here's what I know. From reading this, okay, apples are $1 each and oranges are 50 cents each. Now if I look down here, it says x plus 0.5y equals 8. So what I know is that x is going to represent the at number of apples, or a dollar each. So x is the number of apples. Okay? And then y is the number of oranges. Okay? And what I'm looking for is this point of intersection, my solution to my system. So we already have it over here. Okay, and this is going to be the point 6, 4. Okay, and once I have that, here's what I know, is that x equals 6, and that y is equal to the value 4. Okay, and because x is the number of apples, that means that I have 6 apples, okay, and 4 oranges, and that's my solution. Okay. And so it's important that what we're able to do is we are able to gather this information and identify what our variables are based on what we're reading. Okay, that is extremely important. All right, so that's all I have for this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye!